Okay, everybody. Uh, so today we'll uh, talk about the skeletal tissue. First, we'll see uh, the skeletal tissue structures in our body. That means which structures of our body are formed by the skeletal tissue. Okay. Then we'll talk about one type of skeletal tissue structures. Those are called cartilages. We'll see the properties and types of cartilages. Another type of skeletal tissue structures are the bones. So we'll talk about the bones, how we classify the bones. Normally, we classify the bones in two ways, by looking the shape of the bones and by looking the texture. So we'll see the classification of the bones. Also, we'll see the bone markings. What are the bone markings? You already know. On the surface of the bone, you have seen grooves or sulci, right? You have seen trochanters, tubercles, right? Tuberosity. So those are the markings on the bones. So we'll see what are the different markings we see on the surface of the bone. Then we'll talk about the structure of the bone and the cells of the bone. There are different types of bone cells present in the bone. We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about the site of blood cell formation. You know that blood cells are formed in the bone marrow. Okay, so we'll see where inside the bones we have the bone marrow. First, the skeletal tissue structures. <coughs> skeletal tissue structures are bones, cartilages, ligaments. The bones are vascular. That means the bones have blood supply, blood vessels. Bones also have nerves. That means if the fracture of the bone occurs, then bleeding will occur, right? Because blood vessels are present inside the bones. Also nerves, so you'll feel pain. Cartilages are avascular, absence of blood vessels. No blood vessels are present. No nerves. Ligaments too. Ligaments have no blood vessels, no nerves. Now, there are three types of cartilages present in our body. You already know that when we talked about the classification of connective tissue, uh, you have learned that there are three types of cartilages. The most common type is hyaline cartilage. Where you will find the hyaline cartilage? I have mentioned before, repeating again, in the fetal skeleton. The whole skeleton of the fetus is hyaline cartilage. Respiratory tract cartilages are hyaline cartilage. Your trachea, larynx, bronchi, those are formed by hyaline cartilages. They have hyaline cartilage. Articular cartilage. That means the cartilages in the joints. You know that in synovial joints, you have seen the end of the bones are covered by articular cartilage. That is a hyaline type cartilage. Also, 
the costal cartilages attached to the ribs in the thoracic case. Those are the hyaline cartilage structures formed by hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage. Only in few structures you will find elastic cartilage. Uh, for example, epiglottis. Epiglottis of your larynx. Okay. And the pinna of your ear. So, ear and epiglottis. Both start with P, right? Fibrocartilages. Also, few structures of your body are formed by fibrocartilage. Which is structures? Intervertebral discs. Pubic symphysis. Meniscus of the knee joint. You know that knee joint has meniscus, right? So, uh, those are the main fibrocartilaginous structures in your body. Okay. Here, uh, this picture is showing the location of those three types of cartilages. I have already explained. So, you should be able to follow. Now, the bones, you know that the bones of the skeleton are divided into two groups, axial bones and appendicular bones, right? You know that. Axial bones are the bones of the skull, thoracic case and vertebral column. So here, this is your axial skeleton, you know that. So the skull, thoracic case and the vertebral column belong to the axial skeleton. So those bones are axial bones. Appendicular bones are the bones of your <coughs> upper and lower extremities. So these two are upper extremities and your lower extremities. Those are the appendicular bones. So, upper extremity, now see, each upper extremity has what? Pectoral girdle and the upper limb. This is called upper limb and this is the pectoral girdle, right? So, those belong to appendicular. In lower extremity, you have one pelvic girdle and the lower limb bones. Okay? So, those are the appendicular bones. So here in this picture you see by two different colors they have shown the axial bones and appendicular bones. Functions of the bones. Support. You know that whole body is supported by the skeleton and the skeleton is formed by the bones. So bones form the skeleton to support the body whole body. Protection. You know that important organs like your brain is protected by the cranial bones, right? Your eyeballs are protected by the cranial and facial bones. Your oral cavity or mouth is protected by the facial bones, right? So also your heart, lungs, those are protected by the ribs. So, protection is a very important function of the bones. Important organs are protected by the bones. Movement. We know that muscles move the bones at the joints. Muscles move the bones at the joints. And joints are formed by the bones. So, by forming the joints, bone help in our movement. Without joints, you won't be able to move the body parts. Storage of large amount of minerals 
particularly calcium, magnesium and phosphate. Those chemicals are heavily present in the bone, stored in the bone. Phosphorus or phosphate. So calcium, magnesium and phosphorus. Blood cell formation. You know that the red bone marrow is the primary site for the blood cell formation. Blood cells are formed in the red bone marrow. Okay? And bone marrow is a part of a bone. Inside the bone, you have the bone marrow. Storage of fats and triglycerides. Inside the bone, you also have adipose tissue or fat and triglycerides. Those are stored inside the bones and they work as stored form of energy because you know that when fat burns or metabolism of fat occurs, lot of energy is released. Same for triglycerides. So those are the stored form of energy. Classification of the bones. As I have already mentioned, we classify the bones based on the shape and, the, and based on the texture. First, we will see how we classify the bones based on the shape. We divide the bones into four types. Long bones, short bones, flat bones and irregular bones. So those are the four types of bones based on the shape of the bones. Very easy. You can tell by their names. Long bones are long. That means the height is more than the width. Femur, tibia, fibula, those are the good examples of long bones. Short bones, you know the carpal bones, right? The tarsal bones, you have seen those cubical shaped bones or almost cubical, those are short bones. Height and width almost same. Best example, carpals, tarsals. <coughs> uh, also, your patella is a short bone, but patella in some books you will see uh, they have root patella and pisiform here in your carpal bones. Those have been grouped in a different uh, group uh, that's called the sesamoid. But in your book, they have classified uh, into four types and sesamoid has been uh, included in short bones. But you can just write it down that your patella is a typical sesamoid bone. You know when you eat burger at Burger Kings. Have you seen the seeds, tiny seeds on, on the burger? Uh, the sesame seed. Uh, the bone looks like that. That not that is small definitely, but the shape is like that. That's why uh, patella and another bone here that is called pisiform, P I S I F O R M. Uh, those belong to the sesame. your carpals. Okay, uh, so the short bones. Then flat bones. Flat bones are flat and most of the flat bones are slightly curved too. Not only flat but slightly curved like this. For example, your parietal bones like this. Right? Frontal bone. Occipital bone, you have seen curved. Even sternum is slightly curved like this. So, 
flat and slightly curved. Irregular bones. Those bones don't have any particular <coughs> shape. That means they are not long, they are not flat, they are not short. They have many multiple processes stick out from the body. So those are irregular. For example, vertebrae. You know that vertebrae has a body but also seven processes, right? Going in different directions. So it is a an irregular bone. So those are uh, the classifications based on the shape. Now, based on the texture, we classify the bones into two types, compact and spongy. Compact bones are hard bones, very strong, very hard. And spongy bones are honeycomb like structure. So, uh, soft and lot of spaces inside. You know the honeycomb, right? Have you seen honeycomb? Lot of spaces, right? Inside, tiny spaces. So, soft bones look like honeycomb and soft. They are soft. Now, um, <coughs> where you will find the hard and soft bones? If you see a long bone, the shaft part is completely formed by compact, hard. When you eat the chicken leg, you know that the mid shaft is very hard, right, to break. But both ends are soft. Why? Because in both ends, you have the spongy bone. Only thin outer layer of the ends are formed by the compact bone. So thin layer of compact bone, but inside is filled with spongy bone. That's why the ends are soft, easily crashed or fractured. Okay. Now, if you see the spongy bone, see in the right side, you will see many spiky structures, spike-like processes. Those are called trabiculae. So, many spike-like uh, projections or structures, those are called trabiculae. And in between the trabiculae, you have spaces. Why you have spaces there? Because those spaces are filled with red bone marrow. So those spaces are for the red bone marrow where the blood cells are produced. That's why you have many spaces there. In a flat bone, you will see the outer and inner surfaces are formed by compact bone, but middle portion is the spongy bone. That means in between two layers of compact, that means hard bone, you have the soft spongy bone. It's like a sandwich, right? So you have two outer and inner layers and inside you have the spongy bone. So, now, if I ask you where you will find the red bone marrow inside the bones, remember that in very early stage, inside all bones, you have red bone marrow, okay? In a fetus or a small baby, inside the whole skeleton, you have a red bone marrow. When we get older, what happens? The red bone marrow only is present inside the spongy bones. Inside what? Only inside the spongy bones. Now you know where we have the spongy bones. At the end of what? Long bones and inside the flat bones, right? We have the spongy bones. 
so those are the sites in adults in adults red bone marrow is only present inside the spongy bones make sense so where you have spongy bones at the end of the long bones and inside the flat bone okay what happens then inside the shaft in early life as i have mentioned everywhere you have red bone marrow that means inside the shaft you also have red bone marrow also in at both ends but in adults inside the shaft the red bone marrow is replaced by the fat that is called the yellow bone marrow so yellow bone marrow is the stored form of energy but it cannot produce blood cells because it is a fat and we know that fat is the stored energy right we have just talked about that so inside the shaft in adults you have the yellow bone marrow which is the adipose tissue or fat now the markings in the bones you have many different types of markings on the bones some markings are the projections that means part is extended out from the bone projections extended structures just know that projections are mainly for the attachment of muscles or ligaments <clears throat> so the projections are mainly for the attachment of the muscles or ligaments or tendons we will go over this now another type of structures you have on the bones those help in the formation of joints so those are helping to form the joints so some structures help for the attachment of the muscles tendons ligaments some structures help to form the joints and some structures are for the glands or fats or for the passages of the blood vessels or nerves so now i have mentioned three types of structures number one for the attachment of muscles tendons ligaments you have some structures right some structures you have for the joints to form the joints and some structures you have to hold the glands or fats or blood vessels nerves to pass through so now first let's go back to the structures for the attachment these are the structures you will see on the bones tuberosity crest trochanter line tubercle epicondyles spine and processes you have already seen all those structures on the bones you remember ischial tuberosity right deltoid tuberosity so rough areas for the muscles rounded but rough rounded rough structures on the bone crest narrow prominent ridge you have seen the iliac crest on the iliac trochanter lars irregular bony mass it is not kind of round it is irregular lars irregular bony mass for the muscles you have seen greater trochanter like a lesser trochanter on the femur line we also see lines on the bones for example linea aspera the line on the femur right you have lines on the bones tubercle 
tubercle are tiny round structures. So large rough round structures are tuberosity, tuberosities, but if the structure is small or tiny round, usually we say tubercle. So basically we can say tuberosity is the parent and tubercle is the son or daughter, small right? child. Epicondyles, raised area above a condyle. Why we did not include condyle here? Because condyle forms joints. So we are not talking about the structures form joints. We are talking about the structures uh, provide the attachment. So on the condyles, above the condyles, you have epicondyles. Spine, you have seen the spine in the back of the scapula, right? Sharp, slender projections. You know the spinous process of the vertebrae. So, those are the structures for the attachment. Now, the structures for the joints. Head, you know that head of the femur forms the hip joint. Head of the humerus forms the shoulder joint, right? We know that. Head is for the joints. Facets smooth, nearly flat, articular surface on the bone is called facet. If you see uh, in the side of the thoracic vertebrae, you will see small, smooth, flat surfaced structures. Those are called facets for the ribs. So ribs get attached to the facets on the vertebrae. Uh, do you remember superior articular process, inferior articular process of vertebrae? Do you remember that? So, superior articular process of vertebrae below, inferior articular process of vertebrae above, they join, right? Like this. And here, you have smooth surface area facets. So, they form the joints. Condyles. You have seen lateral and medial condyles in the femur. The lower end at the lower end of the femur, they form the knee joint, right? So, large round articular structure. Ramus, arm like bar. You have seen the ramus of the mandible, and the end of the ramus forms the temporomandibular joint. So, those are the structures, they form joints. Head, facets, condyles. Ramos, right? Now, we will see the structures. Let the blood vessels or nerves pass through them. Blood vessels and nerves pass through those structures or the glands or fats are located. So, meatus. If you see a tube-like structure inside the bone. That means like a tunnel. You know, tunnel inside. In uh, sometimes you drive through the tunnel. So, tunnel-like or canal-like or tube-like passageway to the bone, meatus. Here you have the external acoustic meatus going in. Sinus cavity inside the bone. Within the bone, if you see a cavity, that is a sinus. The largest sinus, you know that inside the maxillary bone, maxilla, right? Fossa. You have seen the olecranon fossa in the back of the humerus, lower end of the humerus, right? You have seen the intercondylar fossa in the femur. You have seen hypophyseal fossa on the top of the spinoid bone for the pituitary gland. It was in your exam today. So, fossa are basin-like or sink-like structures on the bone to hold the glands, for example, pituitary gland in hypophyseal fossa or fats. 
intercondylar fossa of the femur contains a lot of fats. Groove. If you see a depression on the bone, but not round or sink like, it's like long depression for a tendon or ligament or a nerve. That depression is called a groove. Groove is also called sulcus. Same thing, okay? So sulcus or groove. Same thing. Uh, elongated depression on the surface of the bone for the tendon, ligaments, or blood vessels. Fissure. What is fissure? Fissure is a passage like this, not round, elongated passage, which is a fissure. Now, you have seen here superior orbital fissure, inferior orbital fissure. If you look through the orbital fossa, superior orbital, inferior orbital, like this. So, this is a fissure. Now, if it is round or almost round, that is called a foramen. So, this is what? What is this? Foramen. If it is long like this, that is a fissure. Make sense? Both are for the blood vessels or nerves. Uh, so, those are the depressions or openings. Now, the parts of a long bone. If you see a long bone, a long bone has two ends and both ends are connected by a shaft. Ends are called epiphyses. So, ends of a long bone are called epiphyses. Why we say S-E-S? -E because you know that the long bone has two ends, upper and lower end, right? Usually, upper and lower, so two ends. That's why S-E-S, -E plural. Uh, and a shaft, which is called diaphysis. Diaphysis. Why we say cis? Because it is only one, one shaft, right? So, S-E-S, -E plural, S-I-S, singular. So, two epiphyses and one diaphysis, those are the parts of the long bone. Diaphysis is the shaft and epiphysis are the ends. <coughs> the coverings. The bones are covered by connective tissue layers. And those layers are called uh, the coverings. The outer layer is called the periosteum, and inner layer is called the endosteum. Peri means around, and endo means inside. So now, where the periosteum and endosteums are located? So if this is the long bone. This is your long bone. The outer surface is covered by periosteum. That means around. Peri means around. So this is periosteum. Now we know that inside the long bone you have the cavity. Inside the shaft you have the cavity uh, that contains the red bone marrow or yellow bone marrow. So your endosteum is here. So this is the <coughs> endosteum. Okay. Peri is around, endo is inside. And this is the compact bone. We need to know that this is the compact with the shaft. So, outer surface of the compact bone has the periosteum covering and inner surface of the compact bone has the endosteum. Okay. Uh, and here, uh, this part forms joint, so we don't see that covering. right? 
So here you see the location of the periosteum and endosteum. Okay. Uh, outer surface of compact is periosteum and inner surface has the endosteum. Now the cells, different types of cells of the bone. Bones have four different types of cells. Osteogenic cells are the stem cells. Osteo means bone, remember. So if you see osteo, that must be bone. So osteogenic cells are the stem cells. And osteoblasts, if you see blast, that means young. Osteoblasts are young bone cells. Osteocytes are mature bone cells or adult bone cells. And another type of cells are osteoclasts. Osteoclasts are big, giant. They love to destroy. Okay, so giant cells, bone cells, are osteoclasts. So if I ask you, the stem cells are what? Osteogenic, right? Now, stem cells do what? You all know that. Stem cells do what? Make more cells. Increase the number, right? Produce new cells. So, osteogenic cells produce osteoblasts, new cells, young cells. Osteoblasts do what? <coughs> osteoblasts produce and secrete the matrix of the bone. Produce and secrete what? The matrix of the bone, which is called lamella, by the way. Matrix of the bone is called lamella. matrix of the bone is produced and secreted by the osteoblasts. Osteocytes. Osteocytes basically uh, don't do anything. They sit inside the lacunae. You remember osteocyte in lacunae like tiny insect or spider sitting inside the lacunae. Because the, uh, they are old cells, they don't do much. Osteoblasts, since they are young, they produce, you know that young people are more, you know, active, right, to produce the things. When you get old, you can't do much. Just sit inside the house. So the, the osteocytes sit inside the lacunae. Osteoclasts are giant cells, very powerful, they destroy the matrix. Osteoclasts do what? Destroy the matrix. So who produces the matrix? Blast. And who destroys? Osteoclast. And those two types of cells are main cells for the remodeling of the bones. That means what? Inside the body, your bones are being destroyed and reproduced. The bone tissue is being continuously destroyed and reformed or reproduced. So osteoclasts are destroying, osteoblasts are producing. So that's the remodeling. So you see the stem cell osteoblasts. Since osteoblasts are young, they are healthy and when they get old, they shrink, the size gets small, uh, but in osteocytes, you will see the processes, leg-like structures. So, those are the processes in osteocyte. And osteoclasts are giant cells, big, very big. And you see here one thing, in osteoclasts, you have multiple nuclei, 
several control centers because this type of bone cells destroy the matrix. They need more power. So they have more control centers. Also they have more mitochondria to produce ATP. Okay. So uh, those are the few things that you need to know from this part. We'll stop here. If you have any question, you can ask me. So, the osteogenic cells produce the osteoblasts, right. right? And then the osteoblasts get all the osteocytes. Yeah. So, where do the osteoclasts get from? Osteoclasts also come from the osteogenic cells. Yeah. So, osteogenic cells differentiate, and um, some cells will become the osteoblasts, some cells will become the osteogenic cells. All bone cells will come from osteogenic cells because those are the stem cells in the bone.